The southern waters of Lake Michigan encompass the state boundaries of Michigan, Indiana, Illinois, and Wisconsin. The collective salmon stocking efforts of each state, plus bonus lake trout stocked thanks to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, have transformed this fishery into a mecca for Great Lakes trout and salmon fishing. Not only does this region routinely pump out limit catches of coho, chinook salmon, and lake trout, the fishing takes place so close to shore, even small boat anglers can get in on the action. This week on Fishing 411 TV, Mark and Jake travel to Michigan City, Indiana, a port that's smack in the middle of a salmon fishing paradise. Dad, oh. it ain't gonna take long here, man. It's a nice call. <laughs> Woo. With these short leads on the downrigger, <laughs> it doesn't take long. Oh man, he is green, green, rolling, green, green, rolling, green. rolling back there. Let's see if I can sneak in here and uh, watch that downrigger cable there, kiddo. I got nice, a nice fish, Jake. Nice fish. That right there is what we are after today. Beautiful springtime cohos. They are shiny, they are spunky, and that's what we love about cohos. And right now that fish came on a downrigger, and the reason I kept saying it isn't gonna take long is that downrigger ball is 10 feet down, and I have the spoon about 10 feet behind the downrigger ball. So by the time you pull tight on that fish, that fish is literally right at the back of the boat. Green as can be, it is just an absolute ride. It's one of my favorite ways to catch cohos in the spring. Short leads off short leads off the downrigger ball, and you get these beautiful fish like this. This week's episode was filmed out of Michigan City, Indiana. It's one of the southernmost ports on Lake Michigan. And in the springtime, this is a mecca for targeting fish like coho salmon, a few lake trout, and the occasional Chinook salmon. We were definitely struggling with some tough conditions here. Uh, fortunately, in Michigan City, an offshore wind is not a terrible bad wind when you're fishing the beach. So even in a small boat, a guy can get out here, and it's blowing 25 today, and, uh, and we can still get out here and fish. Look at that pretty silver fish there, Jake. Oh, that's not a bad fish, Dad. Yeah, there nice. you go. The maglip. Got him on the maglip. On Very the maglip. cool. All right. Man, look at that. They are pretty. Silver, silver, silver fish. Look at the colors on these fish. They are definitely the most pretty fish out here in the Great Lakes. Coho, 
The original salmon from the Great Lakes, a lot of people maybe don't realize that, but the first coho plants in Lake Michigan back in the 60s were coho, and then things like Chinook salmon came later, steelhead, brown trout, all that came after the fact. But that was the original salmon right there they stocked in the Great Lakes back in the day. If you're looking to come out here and target cohos in the springtime, you're going to look at Lake Michigan and you're going to go, where the heck do I start? It's such a big body of water. But the nice thing about the spring is it makes this really big lake really, really small because you're only looking at a small area for the most part when it comes to coho fishing in the spring. We're looking for the warmest available water. Now that's going to be found in a couple spots. It's either going to be found shallow where the actual sky is warming up the water and that shallow water warms up a little bit faster, or you're going to find artificially warmed water like in front of a power plant. Now Michigan City has a power plant so if you get here earlier in the year you might want to look around that power plant. We're a little bit later spring and now this shoreline, the whole edge of shoreline of Lake Michigan has had time to warm up. So where these fish have come up into the shallow water to warm up, they're going to find bait here in the shallow water and of course they're going to come up here to feed. A lot of times these cohos will be in school so if you get one or two you might be able to go through that school two or three times and get a half a dozen fish out of one of those schools. After you've exhausted that school of fish, now you go looking and the way you go looking is just keep working up that shoreline and eventually you're going to find another pot of these cohos. Special considerations are provided by Precision Trolling Data and the Lake St. Clair Walleye Association. Special considerations provided by the Ultimate Sport Show Tour, Michigan's Elite Sport Shows. Got one going on the outside board here, Dad. Oh yeah, that board just pegged. Woo! Popped the rod there. Man, it is absolutely windy today. No doubt about that. But that is one of the cool things about springtime fishing in my mind is that, you know, we're close to shore. We're fishing big water. We're on Lake Michigan today, but we're fishing close to shore. You can see how close the shoreline is. It must be sustained 25 mile an hour winds today. But with the direction, we're able to stay close to shore, still get out. Uh, and it creates a fishery for small boat fishermen, big boat fishermen. Literally everybody with a boat can get out here in the spring and catch these fish. Oh, he's pulling hard too. Nothing beats knocking off the cobwebs, getting out in the spring after a long winter, and catching some fish in the boat. My goodness. Well, I'll give you a helpful, helpful hand here with that board in a second. But, uh, feels like a solid fish? Yeah, it feels like a, a really nice fish. He's all yours. Oh yeah, he's pulling good. Let me grab a net here. You know, one of the really cool things about uh, the spring fishing is the fact that the, the type of equipment that we're using to, to catch these, these fish is our walleye gear. We're using monofilament rods, line counter reels. Ooh, that's a nice that fish, Dad. I'm rolling up here on the... Uh, yeah, we're good, you know. A little closer. Got him. Nice. <laughs> that is a nice coho, That is a man. big coho for the spring. For the springtime, they are definitely bigger than average right now. Definitely bigger than average. You can typically expect a two pound fish. That's a lot better than a two pound fish. Well, I'll get this fish up here and show them off. A beautiful chrome spring coho. And what I was talking about is the equipment that we're fishing. Like right here, this is literally the same setup that I would use for walleye fishing. It's a line counter reel. This is a Luxa 300 line counter reel, a medium action trolling rod, a monofilament setup identical to how we would crankbait troll or spinner troll for walleye, so lighter gear than what you would associate with a lot of trout and salmon fishing. And we're fishing shallow, and so what I mean by all of this, what's fun is it's light tackle, fish that are spunky in this cold water, they just don't give up, they fight all the way to the boat. It is a ton of fun here in the spring, catching cohos. Whoa, we are hooked up! Woo I love these cohos. Man, one of the cool things you have to keep in mind about Michigan City. Ooh, this is a good one too, Jake. Yeah, that's a nice spunky that is a dad. Nice one. So I can get him up here for Coming. you. Nice, nice fish. Scoop. Thank you, Jake. Nice fish. That is a very, very good coho. They are definitely fat this year. One of the things I don't think people understand about Michigan City is it's in Indiana waters. So if you come to Michigan City, you're going to have to have that Indiana license. Now, Indiana is a little different than Michigan. You still have to buy a trout stamp in Indiana, whereas in Michigan, you just buy a general license and it covers everything. But what I recommend you do is buy the Indiana license and the Michigan license. And the reason for that is if you come out of Michigan City and you go east, you're not trolling very far and you're going to be in Michigan waters. And so if you find fish in Michigan waters, obviously you're going to need to have a Michigan license. 
license. So invest in both licenses. If you go east, you're definitely going to need the Michigan license. If you go the other direction, you're definitely going to need the Indiana license. And a good chance you're going to need both. That last fish came on a downrigger, and the thing with downriggers is people think of them solely as deep water fishing tools, and that clearly is not the case. Obviously, a downrigger will get you to deep water, there's no question about it, but it's a depth control aid, and it can be fished in any depth of water. We're fishing in skinny water here, 15 feet to 20 feet, and yet putting the downrigger ball just down 5 to 10 feet, we've caught several cohos doing that, so it allows us to fish that water behind the back of the boat you might not otherwise use. So a downrigger is not just a deep water tool for catching fish, it's a tool for catching fish at any depth that you want to fish at. You know, one of the things about springtime coho fishing is that there's a multitude of different presentations that's going to catch you fish. And you kind of have to let the fish tell you on a day-to-day -day basis what it's going to take. Now more traditionally, what I would say is the most popular would be a spoon. When you think about trout and salmon fishing, spoons are a very popular presentation here in the Great Lakes. And we have those in the presentation here today. But one of the things that I love to fish in the spring are body style baits. Uh, primarily when we're fishing the shallow water. Right now we're in that 15 to 20 feet of water. We're using body baits. Things like the Maglet 3.5 or in this case, you know, this is actually a thin fin. We're flat lining them behind the back of the boat, meaning that we're putting about 30, 40 feet of line out, hooking them up to an offshore tackle planer board and sending them out to the side. But what the planer boards do is allows you to stack multiple lines aside where we can put three, four lines on either side of the boat, really cover that water column, cover as much water as possible to try to get as many fish in the boat as possible. Special considerations provided by Bill Lewis Lures. Special considerations are provided by Procure Ruthlessly Effective Bait Sense. Eagle Claw presents the 411 on fishing. You know, a leadhead jig is a simple way to catch fish, but there's some features of a leadhead jig that make them better fish catchers than others. And this eagle eye jig, one of the things I really like about it is the hook. And when you take a look at this hook, it's a thin wire hook. It's a laser sharp hook. It's actually in the Pro V series from Eagle Claw. It's thin wire and it's needle sharp. Absolutely a great hook for sticking uh, walleyes with very little pressure. You can use a light action rod and still bury this hook and have a great chance of landing these fish. The other thing that's unique about this is the hook shank. When you follow the hook shank up, you'll see this little plastic keeper here. The beauty of that keeper is it'll keep soft plastics in place on the hook or cast after cast after cast so you don't have to worry about your plastic sliding down all the time. And I actually use it for live bait fishing. It's perfect for putting half a night crawler on and sliding half a night crawler on and casting that as well. So it's great for plastic, it's great for live bait. The other thing I like about this is the aspirin style of this head. Nice big eye there, um, so a really good attraction abilities. And this is a style of jig and a ball style like this that's going to work for a lot of different applications. You can drag this jig, you can cast this jig, you can back troll this jig, you can vertical jig this jig if you want. So the Eagle Eye jig from Eagle Claw does a lot of things very, very well. They come in quarters and they come in eighths and an abundance of great fish catching colors. I'm going on this inside board. Pulling pretty good, always jumping out there. Well, that tells you what it is. Yeah, it's the right flavor. <laughs> there are a few different kinds of fish out here to catch, and you know, it's not just cohos. There's lake trout in here, the oddball brown trout, um, but the lion's share of the fish you catch are going to be cohos. There would be a, a king salmon or two in here, um, but I believe after looking at that one hop that that one's going to be a coho. Oh, yeah. You want to pull that board off for me, Dad? I got you. There you go. There we go. <laughs> He's jumping all over. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Thought he just came off, but he was coming out of the air. The problem was. That's right, it's pretty fish, here. Dad. Oh, man, he had a beautiful nice. fish. Look at that. Man, I love these things. Look how the line twists on the body there. How it's, see all the marks on the body? That's because he wrapped up in the line. And, uh, and that's so common of cohos. They're hard on tackle. They bust a lot of gear off, even for a modest fish, because as they roll like that, the hooks get caught on the line and snap the line. All right, let's show this fish off here. Another beautiful specimen here in Lake Michigan cohos. This fish came out of maglip. Now this size right here, this is a 3.5 maglip. 
if you've watched Fishing 401 before, you've seen us fish this bait. Honestly, for me, it's just kind of my uh, my confidence bait. I know I can put this bait in the water and just catch fish just about any time of the year I put it in the water, but it works extremely well here in the springtime. That plug style fast action in the shallow water is just really hard to beat. So you team up the nice coho colors. I got a, a chrome with some polka dots on it. That's pretty much just your coho, classic coho color, and you're gonna catch cohos out here on Lake Michigan with it. How about a little historical perspective on cohos? You know, back in the day, the Michigan State coho was actually over 30 pounds, if you can imagine that. We don't see cohos that big in the Great Lakes much anymore, um, but there's a reality to that. Back when cohos were introduced, they were introduced in order to control a forage base that was out of control. Too many alewives. Can you imagine? Too many alewives, especially these days where we don't seem to have enough alewives. So the lack of alewives is why we see smaller fish, but it doesn't mean that our fisheries aren't still viable. In the springtime in particular, you got Michigan cohos here, you got coho stock from Indiana, coho stock from Illinois, and cohos being stocked by Wisconsin, all ending up in southern Lake Michigan. So you have a preponderance of fish here to catch. The fishing is quite excellent, um, but don't set your sights on breaking the state record anytime soon. That's probably not going to happen, but that doesn't mean you can't catch a pile of fish in southern Lake Michigan in the springtime. One of the things that uh, you can keep in mind here is that both Indiana and Michigan have a similar limit. It's five fish per day. So you can have, if you do come down here and get onto these cohos, you can have five cohos, which is a very generous salmon limit in my opinion. So whether you're fishing in Indiana water or Michigan water, the limit is the same. I'm trying to keep the boat going in the right direction. It is definitely a windy day. <laughs> the weatherman got it wrong, but that's okay because we're not far offshore. And, uh, and we're still able to get out here and fish. But it takes a little bit more boat control on a day like today. So when you're ready, we're gonna scoop him quick. That's a nice fish too, Jeff. Keep him coming. Nice. Nice job, Gators. In my mind, that's a typical spring coho. We've been catching some much better fish today. Fishing at three and four pound range are pretty good for this time of year. You have to understand how fast these fish grow. This fish here, if it's a pound and a half or two pounds, by September, this fish could be five or six pounds. That's how fast they grow. Absolutely amazing growth rate. So that's a typical coho. If you get them in the four pound range, you've got yourself a little bit better one. And if you're lucky enough to come here in the fall and fish and get some mature cohos, you might see some in that six, eight, even nine pound range. Special considerations are provided by Cisco Fishing Systems and Stryker Brands. Go early, go late, go prepared. Special considerations provided by Fishhawk Electronics and Daiwa Corporation. Oh, we're hooked up again. Whoa! Now I got a feeling that this is not a coho. <laughs> that might not be a coho. <laughs> I'm just guessing. Got a little more shoulders to it, huh? Yeah, he does. And I'm watching this fool here because we got the... Uh, holy smoke. I'm backed off as much as we can back it off. Okay. Good job, Jakers. We're right down to the bottom of the spool here. <laughs> That is uh, three quarters of the spool gone. So let's see if we can start to get some of this line back. And uh, gain some ground here. Oh my goodness. Jake's gonna be mad at me. This was his side. I jumped in there and, and grabbed his tuna. You know, we've been doing really good on cohos today and we talked about multiple species here. We haven't seen any today until this moment. But the way this fish is running, it could only be one thing. Um, it has to be a Chinook salmon. Um, we just don't have any other species here that would run like this. If this is a lake trout, um, yeah, he would have gave us a nice little run, but nothing like this, you know, pull 300 feet of line out. Um, lake trout don't generally do that. So in my opinion, I think we're looking at a, probably a spring Chinook here, and, and there are a few around. In our pre-fishing, we did catch one really nice one. Um, we're just gonna have to uh, go slow and see what happens here. When that fish took off, he ran out so much line that I slowed the boat down and he actually ran in front of the boat. So now I have all these lines out here to this side. I'm gonna clear it out, try to create an open hole so we can try to land this king. Again, we're only fishing 10 pound tests in our walleye gear, so. Oh, 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 oh. I haven't seen him yet, but you can just feel the power. Absolutely feel the power of this fish. Nothing in fresh water pulls like a Chinook salmon. 
We can keep them in front of that rigger. I know it's weird. I know, I know that's weird, but it's just the way the boat's going. Let's see if I can get him to turn his head and come. Well, no, he kind of. He didn't like that. I think you saw the big old smoker craft, and that was enough for him. He decided to go. So maybe now we'll take him in the back here where we belong. Yeah, now we're going to get him back here where he belongs. Come up over the back here. Keep him coming. A little closer. We got him, Dad. Nice yeah. king. Sweet job, Diggers. Kahuna tuna. Look at that maglip just T-bone right down his throat. You gotta love that. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. What a beautiful fish. Man, did he kick my butt. You gotta love that. I'm going on this planer board here now too. Pockets. Pockets of these fish. That's pretty much the name of the game with these, these cohos in the spring. You'll be trolling around wondering if there is a fish in this lake. Then all of a sudden you hit a pocket of these cohos and it is literally all hands on deck to try to land these fish. I mean, literally in this short amount of time, five minute window, uh, we've had four bites now. So I got my dad's unhooking one and putting it in a live well. So I'm gonna take the board off myself. I would say one of the biggest things today that's kept us on fish is making shorter passes. Oh, he's pulling really good here. But making these shorter passes, allows us to stay on these fish. You know, if you find a pocket of fish, work that pocket of fish and, uh, and make short passes over them until you've exhausted that pot of fish. And uh, don't leave fish to find fish, they always say. But you don't want to leave these little pockets of fish. Stay on them and catch as many as you can. Whoa! Straight to it, let's try again. <laughs> there we have it right there, a spunky spring coho. Hey, my name is Jake Romanak, and you've been watching Fishing 4 on one We'll see you here same time, same place next week. If you get a chance, come out here and catch a pile of these spring cohos. Closed captioning is provided by Lakeside Motorsports, Michigan's premier marine and power sports company. Fishing 4 on one is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, Lorenz Electronics, Starcraft Marine, Yamaha Outboards, Yakima Bait Company, Niagara Falls, USA, Smooth Moves, Bill Lewis Lures, and Jay's Sporting Goods. What's up, Dad? <laughs> no, no, it, I swear to God, it wasn't supposed to be that quick. I knew it was going to be quick, but it wasn't going to be that quick. That's what they call a shaker. <laughs>